Hey everyone, we're living in a world with many concerning events happening right now. For example, last week's attack in Israel by Hamas militants. Today, we want to address these matters through the lens of star knowledge and also provide an update on the direction of our channel. Firstly, we are committed to delivering regular educational content that helps people understand the stars as the ancients did. Our aim is to provide insights into the celestial world. Secondly, we plan to diversify our content by inviting other experts to offer lessons and presentations. We'll also be offering reviews of current events within the context of what's happening in the sky. To understand our perspective, it's important to know that most of our team members were raised in a Christian background. We have a deep appreciation for Jesus and this magnificent creation. We believe that the stories and scriptures hold deeper meanings intended to guide the evolution of our souls and enhance our intelligence. When true beliefs are incorporated, they make us better, smarter versions of ourselves. We're inspired by a law mentioned in scripture that Jesus talked about, which governs truth. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. We are strong believers in seeking knowledge. In line with this law, we put in the effort to seek and gather the knowledge available on the earth as it is required for divine inspiration. Our team members have diverse areas of expertise. Some have delved into holy scriptures for star knowledge. While some have become proficient in astrology and are knowledgeable about it enough that they could make money from it, but have chosen not to. Some have attended Native American star lectures and others have learned from various astrotheologists. Furthermore, some have pursued scholarly research that uncovered the influence of star understanding on our language through the Hebrews, Phoenicians, and Egyptians. Our insights are a complementation of these various knowledge sources and are aligned with the idea mentioned in Genesis that these celestial bodies were created for signs and for seasons. So without further delay, let's discuss Israel and Hamas and what the sky has been revealing. Around dawn on October 7th, there was an invasion into Israel by Palestinian militants. At first, there were reports of hundreds of casualties that morning, and thousands were said to have been taken captive. After Israel's retaliation and declaration of war, the death toll has now risen to thousands and hundreds of thousands have been displaced in less than a week. However, our focus isn't on giving an exact count of casualties in this conflict, but rather on providing commentary regarding the celestial alignments in the midst of this war. One thing to remember is that these planetary alignments aren't set in stone. They're more like saying, hey, it's spring, or hey, it's winter. It doesn't mean that it will rain or snow on a specific day, although snow is more likely to occur in winter months than other seasons. Let's first discuss the placement of Mars, also called the God of War. It's what is called the ruling planet of Aries, yet during the attack and now less than a week later, Mars hasn't been in Aries, but it's been in its opposite Libra. This alignment in the sky is commonly called a detriment. Libra being the scales of balance and Mars being a symbol of war, yet Mars at this time has broken into Libra's territory, kind of like the conflict in Israel. An interesting side note, is that Mars was also in Libra at the time of Israel's legendary Six-Day War. Now, it's important to understand that star science isn't all rigid rules. Some people like to draw definite lines and say, this is exactly that, but it's not always that straightforward. It's a bit like the seasons, winter is cold and summer is hot, but fall and spring are kind of in between, sort of lukewarm. The planets should be seen in a similar way, not just fixed in one place. The Bible mentions them for signs and for seasons, so it's not about rigid definitions. Mars is currently positioned on the cusp of Libra and Scorpio. This alignment isn't just about Libra. It also involves Scorpio, symbolizing death and taking that which doesn't belong to you. Many consider Mars to be the ruler of Scorpio, or at least the co-ruler, and this alignment seems to match the idea that the Palestinians want something that the Israelites possess, which is openly acknowledged. There are even conspiracy theories suggesting that this conflict is linked to other wars and Hamas might have acquired weapons from these other conflicts through the black market. So this planetary alignment is one piece of the puzzle, 
Unfortunately, there may be some darker themes at play here. There's a saying by JP Morgan, millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. You can scoff at star knowledge, but it's clear that those who hold power in this world use it. In one of the upcoming lessons, we'll reveal the secrets of how star alignments can easily influence us, if not manipulate us. I don't desire to bring more fear to the situation than there already is. For some people over there, certainly the world has ended. People often get worried about conflicts in the region because of the end time prophecies mentioned in the Bible. In the United States, there's a series of upcoming eclipses, which we'll discuss in more detail later. That could be seen as a sign that the land needs healing. Similar celestial alignments occur later in the Middle East, so I don't believe that the events prophesied for the very, very end are happening this year in Israel. However, on a different note, it's clear that those who planned this attack had knowledge of the stars. They've left markers that suggest they understand these celestial events. Number one, the assault took place during a waning moon. What is attempted during a waning moon is referred to as the black or the banishing arts. On the morning of the attack, the moon was positioned in Cancer. Specifically, this alignment relates to the banishing of home, safety, and security. So when the Palestinian militants launched their first strike, their intentions were quite clear. They wanted the land, they also considered home, but they didn't want it to be the home of the Israelites any longer. Number two, the militants strategically timed their attack when the moon was aligned with other planets, enhancing its influence. You can observe this in the graphic where all the lines or transits connect. In similar terms, it means the moon was not in a void of course state and ineffective alignment. However, shortly after their attack, the moon did go void of course. It seems that Israel waited during the void of course moon before they retaliated. This situation reflects a complex game of chess between two powers that both seem to understand star alignments, and we'll leave it at that, as this topic can get quite intricate. It's important to take into account the long-lasting planetary influences at play here. One significant factor is the placement of Pluto. Pluto is associated with the concepts like death, change, rebirth, and transformation. For the past 20 years or so, Pluto has been in the constellation Capricorn, which symbolizes elements like men, fatherhood, and governments. During this alignment, masculinity hasn't been as dominant, and there have been significant changes in various governments. However, Pluto recently transitioned into Aquarius, which is strongly linked to people and social structures. As soon as it was in place of the range of Aquarius, we witness events like the earthquakes in Turkey, resulting in the significant loss of life, a theme in line with Pluto's symbolism of death. Now Pluto is in Capricorn again, but within range of Aquarius still, signifying a theme that poses a threat to both governing bodies worldwide and the lives of people. When we look at the state of the world, it becomes quite clear that Israel isn't the only place experiencing conflicts, loss of life, or power struggles. Before concluding, it's worth mentioning the placement of Saturn. Personally, I refer to Saturn as the destroying angel, but ultimately this planet, similar to the concept of the seventh, or the Sabbath day, or the Saturn day, represents a time of rest and reflection. However, its influences often involve taking away or retracting. Currently, Saturn is positioned in the cusp of Pisces and Aquarius, following a lengthy retrograde. When it was in Aquarius, which relates to social constructs, Saturn symbolized a disruption of our social gatherings. I'm referring to the loss of our social freedoms during the COVID crisis. Then, like a clock, we regained our freedoms when Saturn left Aquarius. As Saturn returned within range, some places reintroduced restrictions a month or two ago. However, it's essential to understand that this alignment doesn't always manifest in the same way. Saturn, representing retraction, and Aquarius, representing people, played out in the Middle East as people were forced to flee their homes. Sadly, this Saturn alignment will persist in its position for the remainder of the year, more or less. I hope that I've effectively demonstrated the connection between celestial events and the real-world occurrences. My wish is for all of us to gain a deeper understanding of these matters, empowering us through knowledge. If you have any questions or specific topics you would like us to cover, please feel free to let us know. Thank you for your support of the channel.